How's it going? Hi. It's going good. It's nice to have you here. Yeah, I love this room. How was the Smashing Pumpkins tour? It was intense. It was long. Yeah? yeah it was, it was a 40 lot. shows. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. How exactly. are they getting Are they getting along? Are they? Can you name 40 American cities? You know, if you made me, if you made me <laughs> and, we, and we could, Maybe. like, preempt the rest of the day, I could probably get a couple out. <laughs> Put Kepsi. Uh, but it was a spiral into a trivia yeah. hole. Yeah. Is it fun? Do you guys still, like, I figured you guys haven't opened in a while. Is it, is it nice? Actually, we have a policy of being really open to that stuff. Um, like, when an opportunity comes along, why not? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, when that one came up, it was like, wow, this is perfect timing. And it's kind of a weird way to test out your new material in front of, like, 15,000 people. But... It was great because they didn't care one way or the other. So we were like, yeah, hey. they, don't, they don't know if we're playing Breathing Underwater or not. So. Right. So <laughs> we just were for like, us. great, played the new record. Okay. So the, you say test us a new material. This is this is what I wanted to know about. So what I was told was that you guys went on tour with, with the Pumpkins. You kind of played everything new that you had, right? Everything, every bit of new music that you had. Some of it ended up being on this new record. Some of it ended up being solo stuff for you, Emily. Some of it ended up not being used at all. Am I, am I, am I right here? Well, this was kind of more like the tour we did three, four years ago um, before Pagans or around the release of Pagans mm-hmm. um, where we were still working on a bunch of other music. Most of that that, that didn't go on Pagans um, was sort of like the predecessor to, to uh, the Choir of the Mind record. Um, and then once the Choir of the Mind record was kind of wrapped up, um, then we really started writing in earnest for what became Art of Doubt. Right. Um, and then when we took the Pumpkins tour, we were basically just road testing a lot of that music. The record was already done. So it was already can. done. It yeah. wasn't It wasn't, It wasn't. wasn't yeah. that you were You were testing it out and seeing whether it would work or not. That no. timeline would be pretty impossible. No, it was I more, the tour it was like more just you know, like... SoundCloud? <laughs> yeah, it's possible. That's a word I've heard. Hip-hop, you know. It's true. I've, I've heard, heard of it. I've, I've heard, heard of SoundCloud. <laughs> 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 but is it... Uh, what, what are you looking for when you say you're road testing it? Are you just getting ready to... Are you yeah, just getting used to playing it on stage or are you looking for something from the audience? Well, you're kind of... I mean, you're always looking for something from the audience in, in some regards. But yeah. you're just sort of looking to like, wow, is that resonating or is it not resonating? And if it's not, what are we doing wrong? Um, you know, if it is, what are we doing right? And can we do more of it? And can we move that over to the songs that aren't going so well? And um, I mean, adept, playing it for people who aren't your fans is is really interesting and, and highly indicative of what's working and what's not working because there's, there's they have no prejudice. They don't they didn't come to hear a specific song or not a specific song. Or, right. They're just kind of getting comfortable and um, they're open. So you can see when something's working or not. Yeah, working. Yeah, you're soundtracking their nachos. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't I don't I don't I don't mean to be glib here or and I, and I don't mean to, to like force intention where there perhaps isn't an intention. Mm-hmm. But there are bands who would say, you know, we just make music. We make music for ourselves. We hope people like it. But it's not really necessarily the point. We make art. We, we want to make art. I, I love that you are saying, you know, if the fans didn't dig it, there's, there's something to be learned there. Or if the fans dug it, there is something to be learned Yeah, there. I mean, I think the only reason we've been able to make seven albums and have the incredible, really a privilege of having a career in music is because of that attitude. Like, there's so much respect on our part for the listener, you know? Um, mm. The alternative is just, like, not... That just doesn't sound like a good time to me, and we all know that's really what I'm in this for. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we listen to some new music. Take a listen. Never for Metric's new album, Art of Doubt. I want to talk about the lyrics just for a minute. Um, it hurts to turn the radio on, stamina's gone, my spirit is weak. And then later, I'm fine to sit and stare at the door, can't run anymore, too weary to stand. Those two phrases stuck out to me. Uh, Emily, tell me a little bit about that song. Um, well, yeah, um, I'm glad that those words connected with you, mm-hmm. first of all. Um, as we were saying, that's kind of the point. Uh, but uh, yeah, Now or Never Now in general, the overarching sort of meaning and feeling of that song is about that moment when you actually have run out of alternatives to taking action. And um, I actually, when I was working on one of our newsletters, I trying to describe it, I found myself writing like, it's when you don't have the um, luxury of eventually. And I think everyone's mm-hmm. experienced that in their life in many different forms. It's definitely has nothing to do with, you know, being a musician or being having the kind of life that I have, it's everyone, I think, where you can sort of 
try to tell yourself that it's improving or you're fixing it or there are some things in your life that you have to say, it is not getting fixed. Right. I need to start right this second in another direction. And people deal with it in addiction or in relationships or in thinking about climate change. I mean, right. it's it's a lot of things it applies to. Listen, if this is too personal, just just tell me. I, I, don't, I don't care. Uh, but um, is this about anything specific for you when you say like I don't want to wait for eventually I want to I want to something you know, I can't I don't have the patience to to wait for this to happen what is the this well I mean it's not too personal at all I think by the life that I've you know made I've I'm opening myself to that question but it's like everything the lyrics that we um, that end up on metric records it's about everything and I that's not me trying to be like no, grandiose yeah, you know what I, I mean you, like yeah. it really is. The feeling of if you stand for something politically, if you have views and values that you're going to at some point act on, right. maybe when is that now? Maybe not now, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And uh, same, it, it goes all the way down through, you know, yeah, things in my own development as a person and, you know, my personal relationships and all that stuff that we all deal with. Like, um, so it's no, it's no more personal than any other song. And I, I get this question a lot because I think people have the perception that, my solo records are like the really personal, right? And that metric is somehow less, and it's just, it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm just constantly writing, and then things end up in certain places. Um, and with with metric, with the lyrics, it's definitely that the four of us have talked about this everything that I'm saying, and it's like relating not just to me. It's something that the guys also are expressing through me. You know, uh, Jimmy, we've been talking a little bit about. Um the expectations of the fans, or at least the reaction to the fans, and 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 why that matters, or when when that matters, and whether that matters. You know, when this record came out, um, the question I, when I got to hear it, people were writing me and going, "Is it like old metric? Is it classic metric?" Mm -hmm. Or people were writing me and saying, uh, "Oh, it's so nice to hear. Like, it, it sounds like the first two records. I mean, are these things you're hearing too." Yeah, for sure. I mean, we were hearing them f from within the studio while we were making the record. Like, we were well aware of what was going on. Right. Um, one of the things that we we did un intentionally was we sort of went back to the way the band played in the beginning. Uh, what, in, do, what do you in, mean? In the studio. Like, it, you know, we haven't really made a record since Old World or Live It Out where we really just mic up everything in the room and just play like a rock band. Um, a lot of the records, you know, well, the three after that, you know, Fantasies, Synth Synthetica, and, and Pagans, started to get more produced. Things were getting overdubbed a lot. Things were getting made by machines. There was a lot of electronics happening. There was a lot of different production styles happening, all of which I think are great. There's no no knocking any of that, uh, any of that process. But um, we sort of, during the Pagans touring process, we started realizing that one of the things that we'd been missing in the studio for a while was what happens on stage. And what happens on stage really is like the core of what the band is. Yeah. And we started having conversations like, I wonder if the most the quintessential metric fan, if their favorite thing would be a record or a concert. And and it seemed started to become like the answer from within the band was that the most metric thing was what happens on stage. Right. And and records started to become this sort of like an expression of this idea, an expression of that idea. And uh, what we wanted to do was capture that uh, that thing that happens on stage so the first thing oh, it's we a did, record a literal yeah, record a record yeah. of a moment yeah exactly yeah. Um, and so the first thing we did was realize that we were going to need an outside producer because me having uh, the producer hat and the guitar player hat and the co-writer hat and the you know band member hat was not going to work um, in that context. This is the first time, right, an outside producer got brought in for Yeah, I mean, we've, we've brought other people in, but I've always co-done it with them. Yeah. Um, this is, that is, hard, the, is that hard for you? I mean, I would say yes, it is, but for some reason I just did it over and over and over again, so it wasn't that hard. Um, I mean, was it, was it hard for you to not oh, be to, the producer to, of the record? No, it was the best thing ever. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, if it you're was listening like, to this, there was a great sense of relief <laughs> yeah. that just came over Jimmy's No, face. it was just like, I mean... When we when we called Justin and we we went to Los Angeles actually with Social Scene to play a couple of shows with them, um, and we sort of tag teamed the trip with with meeting Justin for the first time. This is Justin Justin Meldel Johnson. Yeah, that's right. So he worked with like Beck Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, he was yeah. sort of like the OG bass player in Beck's band forever, and okay. um, had a lot to do with 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 everything Beck did for a long time. Also made the M83 records, which are huge for me, mm -hmm. um, and um, a slew of other things, a million other things. Um, and so his first question when we sat down was, so I'm sitting here with Metric and I'm wondering what the hell am I doing here? Like, why, why are you guys calling me? Mm -hmm. 
And I said, are you saying that in reference to the fact that I've produced a lot of these records? And he said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, you're a producer and you're asking me to come and meet you, so what do you want? And I said, I want to join the band. I don't want to, I don't want to be on the other side of the glass. I don't want to tell anyone else what to do. I don't want to think about anybody else's parts. I just want to play the guitar. And he said, yeah, I can do that, no problem. I understand that completely. Um, and that's kind of what happened. And, and the four of us, in a way, like got back together. Um, and I feel like you can kind of hear it. And uh, we definitely went through that process in the studio with him on the other side of the glass, sort of propping us up for the first time. We never really had anyone on the other side of, of the window yelling at us going like, you guys are amazing. Like right. that's never really happened with us before. Like we're always just kind of, we lead a, we lead a, a sort of a small little life. We don't have a real a record company. We don't, there's not a lot of outside forces in the metric world. So, mm -hmm. um, we're kind of hard on each other and there aren't a lot of people like propping us up. So having him kind of do that with his pedigree was, was huge for us. And it just kind of reminded us that we're, we're a band and we can do it. So we just did it. I love what you said. It felt like the four of us got back together. Yeah. Did, Emily, did it feel like that way for you too? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a lot of, it was just that we were all there for everything mm -hmm. because, um, you know, the practical side of, keeping a band like ours afloat for 15 years. I mean, it's, I, you know, you know all of our friends and stars and Broken and Les and all of us, you know, it's it's so unromantic, the reality yeah. of, and how much work it is and the number of people that you, even in a small organization like ours, that you're accountable to and, and considering and your road crew and just all this stuff, it's a lot. And mm. for us to keep things afloat a lot, I, I think one of the things we realized is it'd be like, okay, well, Let's not fly in Josh because that'll save some time. And, you know, really on the in the interest of pragmatism, trying to get stuff done, right. we kind of hollowed out the essence of the band, which is just the four of us were just there for every single moment. And there's times when you're like, yeah, this is stupid. Jules is playing the tambourine. But it's the only way for everyone to genuinely be part of it. Like, otherwise, what are you going to do? Get briefed on the tambourine track, how right. it went? Like, if you go too far for too long like that, you end up, I think, where it's no, there's no ill will. Everyone loves each other, but you just, you can't catch up, you know? So in this case, everyone was there for every single thing. And it, at least for me, it, that it made it way more challenging and more like I was performing for my band who, aside from, you know, the respect we have for the listener, I do this for the three of them. Like mm -hmm. that's who I, you know, hold the highest standard. So. Yeah. I, I think, I think sometimes, and I'm, I'm really guilty of this. I'm just forgetting that you guys are a real band. I think I sometimes with, I mean, I, I know I'm wrong, so you don't have to tell me, but I think of it as you, you two guys as, as metric, but you're, you're, you're a band. You've been a band for how long now? A long time. Well, 20, we met, 20 years. Me and Jimmy know, since, like yeah, 98. And then Josh and Jules, I guess we met them. It's in like 2000. 2000. 2000 feels like a very different climate, not just politically yeah. and not just actual climate, yeah. but um, <laughs> but it does feel like a very different, I mean, can you imagine starting over now? Can you imagine? I can't, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I it's not like it's not happening. You know, there's lots, there's so much music being made and, and people are rising up and doing amazing things and having careers. And it's not like no one can have a career anymore, but the way that we did it doesn't exist anymore. What do you mean? Um, well, we did it pre-internet. Yeah. I mean, that's just the truth. You put up you know? a poster. It was... It's like, I don't know. I, I can't explain that to someone now. Yeah. It doesn't, I don't understand it. I mean, but the Eagles also just like put up a poster, you know? Yeah. Everything somehow. Yeah. The Velvet that's... Underground put up posters. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is, and yeah, then this somehow is... we'd all find each other. I mean, I have the same feeling about meeting anyone in general. It's like, I don't know how all of humanity did this up until now, but we can't, we have more ability to meet each other exactly and it's only gotten harder. Yeah. But that same thing applies for like, you know, I really feel for bands who are starting out who feel like they have to have so many Instagram followers just to get out the door. Yeah. Um, and then how do you, in terms of promoting it, like finding your people. For us, like in, in New York and like in Silver Lake Lounge in LA, like I get, we just, I remember I went to the, Kinkos, I photocopied the poster, I put it up, 10 people came, mm -hmm. then that the next week it was 20, mm -hmm. and then you that's how you would build a career. So I'm sure that people will find the same way to, to do that now, but I, I feel for the next generation that it's challenging. What you got to do is start playing folk music where you cap out at 10. <laughs> right. You get your 10, you're like, all right, you're this, is good, this, is this is good, this is good, this is it, you know, pinnacle. we made it, it'll be all right. <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming in.